possible uh, the sentences on, on the on the desktop or uh, word file will be more visible if you rotate the screen and uh, use the zoom feature okay so uh, in the last lecture uh, we have finished our first derivation that is general heat conduction equation okay so uh, in general format uh, we uh, get the derivation as del square t plus qg divided by q sub x small q sub x g uh, divided by k is equal to 1 upon alpha multiplied by daba t divided by daba small t okay so this equation we uh, find out through the derivation by considering the general heat conduction in a cartesian coordinate system or rectangular system okay now further we have discuss uh, uh, thermal diffusivity okay and uh, we know that it is the ratio of thermal conductivity to heat capacity okay so heat storage capacity of that particular material so in equation format it can be written as alpha is equal to k by rho c okay so k is the thermal conductivity rho is the density and uh, c is the specific uh, heat of that particular material okay now in the today's lecture uh, we are going to understand uh, the first object of uh, this particular uh, chapter that is plane wall heat transfer through plane wall okay and uh, the derivation related to the, that and how to determine uh, the temperature uh, variation in a uh, 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 in a rectangular uh, shape material or we can say that in a plane wall or, or in a composite wall okay or in a slab so that is our objective and uh, uh, for that purpose uh, here uh, you need to consider the heading as heat transfer through plane wall and composite wall give the next heading as heat transfer through plane wall and composite wall heat transfer through plane wall and composite wall okay so in that first of all we try to understand the heat transfer through plane wall okay so uh, in that case we need to assume uh, uh, or uh, we uh, we have to consider some assumption okay so uh, consider a plane wall okay wall we know that wall means uh, uh, marathi ta apan tela bhint mantu okay so wall wall is having a rectangular geometry one can say that it is having the length it is having the width uh, it is having the length height and thickness okay so that is nothing but uh, it is one kind of a parallel pipe okay and uh, we are going to consider this wall is having uh, uh, or manufactured by using the homogeneous material that is means what the composition of that wall in such a manner that it is uniform throughout uh, uh, or uh, same material is used and it is having same thermal conductivity throughout the wall okay now important assumption next is uh, the heat is flowing only in a x direction okay we have discussed the three dimensional ge geometry uh, in in our cartesian coordinate system derivation and uh, uh, there are three axes we know that x y and z if you want to deduce that equation uh, in a one dimension then uh, we have to remove out the two coordinates and we have to consider only one coordinate okay in such a manner here also in wall case we uh, we are deducing the equation in a one dimensional okay and we are considering that the heat is flowing only in a x direction okay heat is flowing only in a x direction so uh, here we have consider this geometry okay and uh, this geometry having the uh, or uh, we can say that the wall geometry and this geometry is having uh, the thickness of l okay plane wall is having the thickness of a l and uh, its cross section area of a plane wall is a and uh, the material okay which is used to manufacture this wall having the thermal conductivity of a k okay having the thermal conductivity of k and this thermal conductivity is uniform throughout the material okay it is not changing uh, with the direction okay so uh, the material is isentropic material we can say that the material is isentropic material and the composition is a homogeneous composition okay so that we will get the isentropic material okay now uh, uh, by considering this assumption l is the thickness a is the cross section area and k is the thermal conductivity 
so uh, we have to consider the wall okay so in three dimensional we have to draw in a different manner that we have to show the length uh, width and height okay only here we are considering one dimensional geometry okay one dimensional geometry uh, consider your your home wall and uh, uh, you are standing in front of that okay by considering the thickness okay so thickness is in front of you okay thickness of that particular wall is in front of you and how it will look so it will be look like a rectangle okay it will be look like a rectangle and we will see only the uh, the thickness of that particular wall we will see only the thickness of that particular wall so l here we have considered that l is the thickness of a plain wall so this is the thickness of this particular wall and it is l uh, l meter we can say that unit as a meter so it is having thickness of l meter now let us consider what let us consider one surface of this wall one surface of this wall is maintained at a t1 degree celsius temperature okay now other surface which is greater than the other surface t1 temperature is greater than the uh, t2 temperature so other surface of a wall is maintained at a t2 degree celsius temperature okay one surface of a wall is maintained at a t1 degree celsius temperature whereas the other surface of a wall is maintained at a t2 degree celsius temperature and here in this case t1 is greater than t2 okay t1 is greater than t2 so that the heat transfer symbol is provided over here q amount of heat will be transferred from this surface to this surface okay q amount of heat will be transferred from this surface to this surface now uh, to to uh, to reach uh, this particular heat to another surface okay the heat should be travel the distance equal to the thickness of that particular wall okay because we are considering only one dimensional geometry okay so uh, the he heat is traveling from this surface to this surface okay so uh, the heat should be travel through a distance of uh, l meter or equal to thickness of that particular wall to reach to another surface to reach to another surface and by considering the ohms law if you uh, if you draw the uh, electrical analogy okay for the conduction of heat now heat is flowing through wall so the uh, the the mode of heat transfer uh, will be a conduction only because there is no any uh, uh, any molecular transformation and there is no any fluid is present in in the wall okay it is a completely uh, a solid body one can say that it is completely a solid body and the heat is traveling uh, because uh, tr uh, transporting from one surface to another surface because of a conduction only okay because of a conduction only remain uh, remember this particular point now when you we we also discuss about the electrical analogy uh, for uh, for the conduction by using the fourier's law okay now uh, the uh, the potential difference is analogous to the temperature difference the heat transfer is analogous to the uh, uh, the electric current uh, tr transformation and the thermal resistance is analogous to uh, 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 analogous to the electrical resistance that we discussed already in previous lectures uh, similar fashion we have to draw the analogy diagram for this particular wall okay analogy diagram for this particular wall so heat is transfer, uh, transforming from this surface to this surface so we have to show the direction of a heat transfer over here okay we have to show the direction of heat transfer over here now uh the potential uh, temperature difference between these two surfaces are t1 and t2 okay and because of that heat is transforming t1 is greater than t2 so that heat is transforming and to uh, uh, the resistance uh, thermal resistance offered by this wall is called as a uh, conduction thermal resistance okay so uh, the rth uh, r suffix th conduction is the thermal conduction uh, or resistance offered by this wall for the conduction heat transfer okay for the conduction heat transfer now this resistance which will be equal to l divided by k multiplied by a okay where the l is the length traveled by the heat okay which is equal to the thickness of that wall okay thickness of that wall and k is the thermal conductivity of uh, material uh, uh, from which uh, the wall is manufactured and multiply by a that is the area which is the perpendicular surface area for the heat transfer which is the perpendicular surface area 
for the heat transfer so uh, the uh, the resistance offered for the uh, heat transfer uh, by conduction uh, which is equal to l divided by k multiplied by a which is equal to l divided by k multiplied by a okay now initially we have to determine the the temperature distribution uh, for this particular wall okay means what temperature distribution means what if Uh, this surface is maintained at a t1 degree celsius temperature and this surface is maintained at a t2 degree celsius temperature okay let's uh, this uh, this two surfaces are apart by uh, 10 cm distance okay let's this uh, two surfaces are apart or uh, we can say that this thickness of the wall is equal to the 10 cm then if you want we know that the t1 degree celsius temperature and we know the t2 degree celsius temperature that because that are the measurable points okay by using the devices you can measure uh, the uh, the surface temperature but if you want to determine the intermediate temp temperature okay if you want to determine the intermediate temperature then there is there is no any scope uh, for the devices to measure the intermediate temperatures of a wall okay so intermediate temperatures means what if you consider this is x is equal to 0 okay this is x is equal to 0 so this surface Uh, if you apply the uh, the coordinate system so at this particular point x is equal to 0 and at this particular point x is equal to l okay if you consider the coordinate system so in that case if you want to find out the temperature at l by 2 okay or we can say that uh, as as per assumption if you want to determine the temperature at 5 cm distance from this surface then what will be the uh, temperature at the intermediate portion of this particular wall so that will not be easily determined so for that purpose we required the temperature distribution equation and that we have to find out in this particular uh, derivation okay so uh, for that purpose we have to take uh, we have to consider the general heat conduction equation okay in a cartesian coordinate system because the geometry is a rectangular geometry so for that purpose we are applying the cartesian coordinate system okay why we are considering the cartesian because the geometry is a rectangular geometry which can be measured or each point of this particular geometry can be measured by using x y z coordinate system okay each point of this particular geometry can be measured by using x y z coordinate system okay so for that reason we are considering the cartesian coordinate system for the plane wall okay and the general heat conduction equation that we have discussed uh, in the previous lecture that we need to consider over here okay so what is that equation the, the equation is del square t plus qg divided by k or qg multiplied by 1 upon k equal, uh, which is equal to 1 upon alpha multiplied by delta t divided by delta small t okay so this is the first equation we need to consider over here whereas uh, the t is the temperature and which is changing with respect to uh, coordinate axis as x y z okay and uh, del square will, which will be uh, the partial differentiation with respect to Sec second uh, partial differentiation with respect to x uh, with respect to y and uh, with respect to z uh, whereas q sub g is the uh, the heat generation per unit volume per unit time k is the thermal conductivity of the material 1 upon alpha is the reciprocal of uh, thermal diffusivity uh, whereas the alpha is nothing but uh, uh, nothing but the thermal uh, diffusivity okay and delta t divided by delta small t is nothing but change in temperature with respect to change in time okay change in temperature with respect to change in time now uh, to to uh, to deduce this equation we need uh, some assumptions okay to to deduce this equation in the form of a one directional uh, heat transfer uh, we required some assumption and this assumption are useful uh, to carry out the further derivation so first assumption is nothing but heat is conducted without uh, internal heat generation okay heat is conducted without internal heat generation what it means there is no any heat source present in that particular wall geometry okay there is no any internal heat source okay present in that particular wall geometry so we can say that uh, the uh, the heat generation per unit volume per unit time that is uh, small q sub g which is equal to zero which is equal to zero okay now so this is our first assumption q sub, uh, sub x g equal to 0 that is internal heat generation uh, will be equal to 0 okay and the second assumption is nothing but what 
the heat conduction is at a steady state steady state means what there is no temperature change with respect to time okay steady state means what there is no temperature change with respect to point uh, uh, with respect to time so for that purpose we are considering that uh, daba t divided by daba small t that is temperature change with respect to time equal to zero okay and the important last one assumption is that the heat is conducted only in x direction that is uh, we are considering heat is flowing only in x direction so the, so that the geometry is one dimensional geometry okay the geometry is one dimensional geometry we are considering over here okay wall is a three dimensional but we are considering only one directional geometry okay because the heat is flowing in a x direction only now once we have considered this particular assumption assumptions if you put up this assumption in this particular equation number 1 okay so in equation number if you put up the assumptions qg is equal to 0 then this second term will be equal to 0 then uh, daba t divided by daba small t equal to 0 then uh, uh, after equal to sign whatever there so this becomes a zero okay so then uh, the equation 1 equation 1 we will uh, the remaining part of equation 1 is nothing but only del square t okay del square t equal to zero okay so del square t equal to zero now in this equation del square t only we are considering the x direction only so y and z will becomes a zero okay so temperature uh, uh, change with respect to y direction and temperature change with respect to z direction okay it will be equal to zero we know that daba uh, uh, del square t means what Uh, daba square x divided by uh, daba y square uh, daba square t divided by daba x square plus daba square t divided by daba y square plus daba square t divided by daba z square okay that is the meaning of del square t okay so this is del is the vector operator uh, the meaning of uh, del square t we have discussed now now in that uh, particular uh, uh, three uh, axes are present and we have consider that the the temperature is changing with respect to x direction only because we are considering only one dimensional heat flow so that uh, the ultimate cons consideration will be that uh, what will be there ultimate consideration so uh, the heat is traveling in x direction means what the temperature is also changing only in the x direction okay temperature is changing only in the x direction so by applying this uh, theories or by applying this assumption finally we will get the equation of uh, uh, del uh, daba square t divided by daba x square which is equal to zero daba square t divided by daba x square which is equal to zero getting everyone how we deduce uh, the general heat conduction equation in this particular form okay so this equation will be equal to our equation number 2 now what will be the next so uh, until Uh, now we are considering a small volume element so we are taking the partial de derivative now consider the whole plate okay up, up till now we are considering only small element of uh, the total body okay so that is the meaning uh, we have derived the derivation for the small element okay so for that reason we are considering the partial derivatives okay partial derivative now uh, we are going to consider the complete body okay we are going to consider the complete body so instead of partial derivative we have to consider the total derivative okay instead of partial derivative we have to consider the total derivative so the daba 2t uh, divided by daba x square will be converted into uh, d2t divided by dx square okay d2t divided by dx square okay getting why we have converted this daba into d okay why we have converted this daba into d because initially Uh, for the uh, for the derivation purpose we are considering very small element so that in that case we can apply the partial differentiation okay now we are considering the complete body okay complete wall so for that reason uh, we are uh, converting uh, daba into complete derivative or partial differentiation into complete differentiation okay so that this equation is converted into this particular equation okay getting everyone is there any question any doubt d2t divided by dx square is equal to 0 now further 
what we have to do we have to integrate that equation okay so integrate this equation after applying the integration okay what will happen after applying the integration first derivative because we are integrating it only one time so that the first derivative will be removed okay one integration and one derivative will be cancelled to each other okay and uh, we will get the equation as a dt divided by dx equal to c1 okay after applying the integration one constant will be added okay after applying the integration one constant will be added and that will be equal to c1 okay that will be equal to c1 so one integration one derivative cancelled and we will get the dt divided by dx and one constant will be included after the integration which is equal to c1 okay further we have converted this equation by transforming this dx on this side okay this dx denominator dx we have transformed on the another side so we will get the equation as dt is equal to c1 multiply by dx okay dt is equal to c1 multiply by dx okay once we get this uh, equation we can integrate this once again okay we can integrate this once again so integrate once again so separate integrations will be provided integration of dt equal to integration of dx multiply by c1 c1 is the constant okay so integration of dt will be equal to t okay integration of dt will be equal to t and integration of dx will be equal to x okay and the constant c1 c1 multiply by x plus second integration constant need to uh, need to put up in this particular equation and that second integration constant we have added over here that is plus c2 okay plus c2 c1 is the first integration constant okay and c2 is the second integration constant okay now further we have to apply the boundary condition further we have to apply the boundary condition boundary condition means what uh, what what is the condition at the end of that particular geometry at the end point of that particular geometry okay so uh, the total thickness of our geometry or the wall is l l meter okay l meter so uh, we have to start measuring from any of the point okay thickness should be started from one point to another point so 10 cm if you want to measure then we have to start zero from anywhere okay so let us consider that this geometry okay so if you consider this is the 10 cm geometry then we can say that uh, if you measure from this point uh, to this point then here the the length will be at this particular point the length will be zero and at this point the length will be 10 cm so in a such a manner if you are considering this as uh, the boundary condition so boundary condition means what end surface conditions of that particular material okay end surface condition of that particular material or uh, the condition at the boundaries of that particular uh, object will be considered as a boundary okay so and uh, what are the situation or what is the uh, property at this particular uh, end uh, conditions uh, that is nothing but the boundary condition okay so let us consider at x is equal to 0 okay at x is equal to 0 so means what we are at this particular surface okay we are at this particular surface so at this point the temperature is t1 okay the temperature is t1 and when we reach to another surface at that point we can consider that x is equal to l at this point we have to consider x is equal to l so at x is equal to l what is the temperature temperature is t2 okay at x is equal to l temperature is t2 okay so in a similar fashion we have considered the boundaries over here okay okay so boundary condition okay at uh, if you can consider the left face at x is equal to 0 temperature is t is equal to t1 okay and at x is equal to l t is equal to t2 okay at x is equal to l t is equal to t2 okay so uh, this is our equation number 3 now uh, we have to apply the boundaries boundary conditions to this particular equation we have to apply this boundary condition to this equation number three so uh, apply first boundary condition to equation number three apply first boundary condition to equation number three so in equation uh, in first boundary condition x is equal to zero and t is equal to t1 so equation number three we have considered over here t is equal to c1 x plus c2 okay and on this equation we have to apply the first boundary condition 
so equation this equation becomes t becomes t1 t becomes t1 as we know that in first boundary condition t is equal to t1 so t becomes t1 equal to c1 multiply by x is equal to 0 okay in first boundary condition x is equal to 0 so that here x becomes 0 plus c2 plus c2 by applying first boundary condition we'll get that t1 is equal to c2 okay so uh, c1 multiply by 0 equal to 0 so that we will get t1 is equal to c2 so we can say that c2 is equal to t1 okay once again we have to apply the second boundary condition second boundary condition is what is second boundary condition when x is equal to l at that point t becomes t2 okay when x is equal to l at that point t becomes t2 so by applying the second boundary condition to equation number 3 we will get the equation as t2 is equal to t2 is equal to c1 multiplied by l okay as x is equal to l so we will get t2 is equal to c1 multiplied by l plus c2 okay now we have to determine the c2 uh, t, uh, we have to determine the c1 that is the constant c1 constant we have to determine so for that purpose once again we re-put this particular c2 value in this equation okay c2 is equal to t1 okay put c2 is equal to t1 because we have determined that so we can put up c2 is equal to t1 in this particular equation so uh, after putting we will get therefore t2 is equal to t2 is equal to c1 multiplied by l plus t1 t2 is equal to c1 multiplied by l plus t1 okay so uh, after formulating this equation in the form of a c1 only okay after formulating this equation in the form of a c1 only so then uh, to to uh, to get the equation in the form of a c1 we have to transfer this t1 on this side so it will become t2 minus t1 and uh, here the c1 multiplied by l term will be remain so l if you want uh, if you transfer this l on this side so we will get the equation in the form of a c1 okay so the c1 is equal to t2 minus t1 divided by l t2 minus t1 divided by l okay now c1 value we know uh, and c2 value we know okay we can uh, our aim is to find determine the constants only out of that particular equation so once you get the c1 and uh, c2 uh, we have to re-put these two values c1 and uh, c2 in equation number three okay so that is our uh, equation after double integration okay so put values of c1 and c2 in equation number 3 okay so c1 value we put in uh, instead of c1 we have put up t2 minus t1 divided by l and instead of c2 uh, we have put up the t1 only okay so that will be the that will be the equation number 4 that will be the equation number 4 okay so now if you compare this equation with the line equation okay what is the line equation line equation is y is equal to mx plus mx plus c okay so that is the line equation okay so uh, so here we can compare t with the y then uh, t2 minus t1 divided by l with the m and x as it is and t1 as it is so we can say that this particular equation is a linear equation okay linear equation what it suggests or what it signifies it signifies the temperature change occur in a wall in occur in a wall linearly okay temperature change in a wall occur linearly so if you plot the graph uh, for the temperature change with respect to distance so we will get only a straight line we will get only a straight line so okay so the equation for represents equation for represents that the temperature distribution is linear across the wall uh, is linear across the wall and is independent of thermal conductivity and it's independent of thermal conductivity so whether there is any thermal conductivity term in this particular equation number four no it is absent so we can say that it is independent of it is independent of thermal conductivity it is independent of thermal conductivity getting everyone so once again if you rearrange that equation in the form of uh, uh, for the easy understanding if you rearrange this equation then uh, you you have to transfer this t1 on this side it will becomes t minus t1 okay t minus t1 and t2 minus t1 if you transfer on this side 
it will be t minus t1 divided by t2 minus t1 and on the right side uh, the remaining part is only x divided by l x divided by l what it suggests this equation so consider that t1 and t2 are the surface temperatures of wall okay two surface temperatures of wall okay now if you want to determine the uh, you know the total thickness of wall let us say 10 cm is the thickness and you want to determine the temperature at distance 2 cm okay at distance 2 cm so you just put up 2 divided by 10 and temperatures whatever the surface temperatures t1 and t2 whatever you measured on the surface of a wall so that temperature you just put up and you will get the t value okay you will get the t value so t is the unknown unknown part so t1 and t2 is the known part okay and just put up the values of t1 and t2 temperatures and uh, what, at what distance you want to determine the temperature that distance you have to put up here instead of x and total length is uh, or the total thickness of that particular wall is the known quantity so you can easily determine the temperature at the intermediate distance you can easily determine the temperature at a intermediate distance so so this is the significance of this particular equation so which is called as a temperature distribution equation for the wall geometries okay wall kind of a geometries or rectangular geometries okay so t minus t1 divided by t2 minus t1 equal to x divided by l okay t minus t1 divided by t2 minus t1 equal to x divided by l okay getting everyone getting everyone is there any question any doubt is there any question any doubt so this is our unknown part that we have to determine in this particular derivation temperature distribution equation okay for the wall okay for the wall kind of a geometries okay so write down write down heat transfer through plane wall and composite wall new heading heat transfer through plane wall and composite wall heat transfer through plane wall and composite wall consider consider part a out of that part a part a is heat conduction through plane wall 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 write down write down write down consider a plane wall consider a plane wall consider a plane wall of homogeneous material of homogeneous material of homogeneous material through we through which heat is flowing only in x direction through which heat is flowing only in x direction let 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 l is equal to l is equal to thickness of plane wall l is equal to thickness of plane wall l is equal to thickness of plane wall thickness of plane wall a is equal to a is equal to a is equal to cross section area of plane wall a is equal to cross section area of plane wall a is equal to cross section area of plane wall the next k is equal to thermal conductivity of wall material k is equal to thermal conductivity of wall material k is equal to thermal conductivity of wall material okay so consider this diagram draw this diagram everyone simple diagram one dimensional diagram a 
also draw circuit diagram for this particular wall circuit diagram electrical analogy we can say that circuit diagram or electrical analogy for the wall geometry Over. So L is the thickness, T1 is the surface temperature on one side of wall, and T2 is the surface temperature on another side of the particular wall. K is the thermal conductivity of material, material of the wall. Okay. so electrical analogy will be in this manner heat is flowing as current is flowing in a electrical circuit heat is flowing in a thermal circuit due to temperature difference t1 t2 and uh, resistance offered by the geometry which is equal to the thermal resistance for conduction of heat okay and which will be equal to l divided by k multiplied by a which will be equal to l divided by k multiplied by a okay so then next the general heat conduction equation in cartesian coordinates general heat conduction equation in cartesian coordinates is given by general heat conduction equation in cartesian coordinates is given by general heat conduction equation in cartesian coordinates is given by del square t del square t plus qg divided by k small q suffix g divided by k equal to equal to 1 upon alpha 1 upon alpha multiply by delta t divided by delta small t delta t divided by delta small t okay give this equation number 1 equation number 1 here here assume here assume first one first assumption heat is conducted heat is conducted without internal heat generation heat is conducted without internal heat generation heat is conducted without internal heat generation that is that is small q sub g is equal to 0 small q sub g is equal to 0 small q sub g equal to 0 then second assumption heat conduction heat conduction heat conduction is at steady state heat conduction is at steady state steady state that is that is delta t divided by delta small t delta t divided by delta small t equal to 0 equal to 0 equal to 0 so third assumption is heat is conducted heat is conducted heat is conducted only in x direction heat is conducted only in x direction heat is conducted only in x direction that is that is 1d heat flow one dimensional heat flow that is 1d heat flow therefore equation 1 will reduce to therefore equation 1 will reduce to equation 1 will reduce to 
del square t is equal to zero. Del square t is equal to zero. In that, in that, once again, there are there is only one direction or only one coordinate uh, system that is x direction only. So that uh, further reduction will be in such a manner that is temperature changes with respect to x only. Okay, temperature changes with respect to x only. and temperature changes with respect to y and z should be considered as a zero okay should be considered as a zero so that we will get the equation as daba square t daba 2t divided by daba x square okay daba 2t divided by daba x square daba 2t divided by daba x square equal to zero equal to zero so this is our equation number 2 okay now write down next until now until now we are considering we are considering we are considering a small volume element a small volume element a small volume element so so we are taking so we are taking partial derivatives so we are taking partial derivatives full stop so we are taking partial derivatives full stop now consider whole plate or whole wall okay plate or oblique wall you can write here oblique wall also plate oblique wall okay now consider whole plate oblique wall therefore equation 2 becomes equation 2 becomes d2t divided by dx square okay partial derivative uh, converted into a complete derivative as d2t divided by dx square equal to 0 equal to 0 okay equal to 0 now we have to remove out the differentiation sign and we have to find out the temperature distribution equation okay for that reason we are taking the integration now integrate above equation integrate above equation so integration will be applied to this particular equation and after integration okay integration of d2t divided by dx square is equal to 0 integration of d2t divided by dx square okay so one integration one derivative will be cancelled okay one integration one derivative will be cancelled so we will get the equation as D, dt suffix dx dt divided by dx dt divided by dx is equal to c1 so after integration we have to add up one constant okay that is the simple rule of maths that uh, after integration you have to add up the constant okay so dt divided by dx is equal to c1 dt divided by dx is equal to c1 further we have uh, converted this equation by separating dt and dx okay by separating dt and dx so it will be uh, simple to differentiate separately t temperature and the distance okay so uh, we have separate out dt divided by dx as dt is equal to dt is equal to c1 multiplied by dx dt is equal to c1 multiplied by dx now it will be easy to integrate once again dt is equal to c1 divided by c1 multiply by dx okay so after doing this separation once again we have to integrate integrate once again integrate once again okay integrate once again so integration of dt will be equal to t integration of dx will be equal to x and c1 is the constant c1 is the constant it will be remain as it is c1 multiply by x once again the another constant will be added for the second integration okay so c1 is the constant for first integration and c2 is the constant for the second integration so plus c2 will be added over here okay integration constant will be added over here so we will get the equation number 3 as t is equal to c1 multiplied by x plus c2 okay t is equal to c1 multiplied by x plus c2 so that will be the equation number 3 okay then the boundary condition we have to apply the boundary condition to determine the constant values 
okay we have to determine the unknown values of c1 and c2 so for that purpose we need to apply the boundary condition boundary condition means what when length is equal to 0 at that time what is the temperature and when length is equal to l that is uh, at the another surface okay when we are at the first surface so at at the first surface we have to consider length is equal to 0 okay or thickness of that particular uh, wall is equal to 0 so x is equal to 0 at that time t is equal to t1 okay at x is equal to 0 t is equal to t1 and when x is equal to l when x is equal to l at that time t is equal to t2 at that time t is equal to t2 okay so after considering this two boundary condition we have to apply this boundary condition to the equation number 3 equation number 3 we have to apply the boundary conditions okay so apply first boundary condition to equation number 3 okay apply first boundary condition to equation number 3 equation number 3 is t is equal to c1 multiply by x plus c2 okay and after applying we will get the equation as or we will get the value for the c2 okay after applying we will get the value for the c2 okay so t t1 is equal to c2 t1 is equal to c2 t1 is equal to c2 then apply second boundary condition apply second boundary condition so second boundary condition is when x is equal to l t is equal to t2 when x is equal to l t is equal to t2 okay so instead of t we have to put up t2 and instead of x we have to put up l okay so t2 is equal to c1 multiply by l plus c2 t2 is equal to c1 multiply by l plus c2 then we have to determine the c1 okay c1 so c2 is known we have to determine the c1 so for that reason here we have to put up c2 is equal to t1 okay here we have to put up the c2 is equal to t1 in this particular equation so we will get the equation t2 is equal to c1 multiply by l plus t1 t2 is equal to c1 multiply by l plus t1 t2 is equal to c1 multiply by l plus t1 okay and further uh, we have converted this equation in the form of a c1 only okay we have converted this equation in the form of a c1 so for the conversion purpose we have to transfer t1 on opposite side so it will becomes t2 minus t1 and we have to divide by l okay on the opposite side or we have to transfer this l on the opposite side so uh, we will get the equation for the c1 c1 is equal to c1 is equal to t2 minus t1 divided by l c1 is equal to t2 minus t1 divided by l now next we know the both the values that is c1 and c2 just put up that c1 and c2 value in our general uh, in, uh, equation or after integrating what we are getting the equation in that equation we have to put up c1 and c2 so we will get the equation t is equal to t is equal to t2 minus t1 divided by l which is c1 t is equal to t2 minus t1 divided by l multiply by x multiply by x plus t1 plus t1 t1 is nothing but c2 okay c2 value is t1 so we will get the equation as t is equal to t2 minus t1 divided by l multiply by x plus t1 plus t1 equation okay if you compare this equation equal uh, with the line equation that is line equation is y is equal to mx plus c okay so similar fashion uh, this temperature equation is there okay so t is equal to ax plus b okay so where a and b m and c are the constants here also this is constant and this is also constant so we can uh, we can say that this is a line equation this is a line equation okay so what it means if you draw the graph for the temperature change with respect to change in length of the wall we will get the line straight line only okay we will get the straight line only okay 
so equation 4 this is the equation number 4 so next write down equation 4 represents equation 4 represents that equation 4 represents that equation 4 represents that the temperature distribution the temperature distribution the temperature distribution the temperature distribution is linear is linear is linear is linear across the wall across the wall and 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 is independent of thermal conductivity and is independent of thermal conductivity okay why it is independent because the thermal conductivity is not present in this particular equation so that we can say that is independent of thermal conductivity and if you rearrange this equation we will get this equation okay if you rearrange the equation number 4 we will get the equation number 5 okay rearrangement is what you have transfer t1 from right hand to the left hand okay uh, and uh, uh, t2 minus t1 on the other side and equation will be converted into this particular format as T minus T one divided by T minus T one divided by T two minus T one T minus T one divided by T two minus T one is equal to is equal to X divided by L X divided by L. Okay, so this is the equation number five. This is the equation number five, which is temperature distribution equation. Which is temperature distribution equation for wall only, for wall only or rectangular geometry. for rectangular geometry we can determine the unknown temperatures intermediate unknown temperatures by using this particular equation okay getting everyone is there any question any doubt please comment in the chat box or you can unmute and you can ask whether you understood or not just comment in chat box is there any doubt any question okay shall shall we move ahead if you don't have any doubt whether you understood or not just let me know whether you understood or not or is there any doubt the subject is full of derivation and uh, there are lot of concept in this subject so you should be attentive okay okay so i think uh, one session is going on so uh, the training session uh, it is already started at 3:30 pm just join that session after this lecture okay and uh, let me know whether it is uh, miss it is having some quality or not so if it is okay for you then uh, we'll arrange more session similar kind of a sessions okay so there will not be the last lecture for you uh, you have to enroll for that session and uh, you have to join that session okay so please join everyone the uh, the link and uh, the details are already shared with you on your uh, whatsapp group so we will stop here you can comment your roll numbers in the chat box and you can leave this meeting and you can join the session